Boot fans, welcome on in, and thanks for joining us on this Monday for what is one of our last episodes of 2014, second last, it's the penultimate. Uh, how are you doing, Rich, this week? Uh, not too bad, uh, just finishing out the year, uh, as it is, as you said, the penultimate Monday of 2014. Yeah, it's been a pretty crazy year when we talk about boots, so we're going to run over, let me give, you, give the folks a rundown of what we're going to cover today, since we do have a lot to cover. We're going to start by looking at the Puma King EF Plus that came in last week. I talked about them a little bit. We we're going to check them out. Um, the Elastigo Superfly, the turf version in the laser orange. We'll talk about the Elastigo Superfly indoor version, the shimmer effects uh, release that Nike had earlier today. The sneak peeking out those Hyper Venoms that we covered a few weeks back and just this past week covered as well. We'll take a look at those images and talk about them. And then we're going to get into packs, Rich, because this week is all about packs and collections. We're going to look at some of the best of 2014 because there were a lot. There were a lot. Yeah. There were over 20 packs. It's, it's been a busy year if you're yeah, designing multiple packs in, in the soccer boot world. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to go over a lot of those packs, pick out our favorites, and just in general talk about them. Have a little bit of that fun with good. them. You good with that? I'm good with that. I mean, it's, you know, uh, it'll be a little bit judgmental, but I'm good at being judgmental, so, you know. You are. You're, you're, you're a pretty good judge. All right, let's kick it off with the Puma King EF, which I have right here, and I wore them yesterday, so they are slightly broken in, and they are a little bit dirty on the sole, but I'll let you see them up close a little bit. Run across the forefoot. And this design is all about the Kevlar laces. Or sorry, the Kevlar cables. I keep calling them the laces. It's not actually the laces. It's these little cables that run around the laces. Okay, so yeah. So it's... Region. yeah. Oh, so it's... So that's what they're about. Sorry, I thought they were about the, uh, like the ridges in the actual... In, well, yeah. On well, the yeah, leather, well, right? So, so what the cables do is the cable runs around the lacing and then down through these ridges, these contour okay. ridges, and then into the sole plate. And then it runs through multiple regions, obviously. So it, it um, kind of contains the boot, keeps everything held in place. For example, and here's, a, here's a prime example. If we look at the, the bottom lacing, you can see how... This lace kind of comes, the Kevlar lace comes down and around and back okay. up here. So it yep. like holds this lace. So as soon as you tighten those laces in, it pulls this region across the metatarsal kind of in a little bit tighter across your forefoot. And it does the same all around the boot. Oh, wow. That's 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 a little bit of uh, ingenuity there. How how is it played out for you after very, obviously very you got it out once? <clears throat> well... I have a little bit of concerns about these these Kevlar laces uh, or these Kevlar cables, and I have a feeling that they're gonna cause popping issues for players somewhere down along the line. Um, but in terms of actual fit and how they performed, I actually enjoyed them a lot. You know, I do enjoy Puma boots, so I like the fit and I like the shape. These felt pretty good on in play. They were very comfortable. Um, Snug, as you would expect. Yeah. Uh, again, with that sole plate, I just enjoy that very loose sole plate right out of the box. Oh, yeah, the, fl the flexible sole plate's really nice. Uh, on, I suppose I should ask, and on the ball, because those, uh, because the obviously the Kevlar, the Kevlar strips there, yeah. they seem to stick up off the upper when, you're, when they come down through. Yeah. Uh, what do you have effect-wise on the ball? Yeah, it feels nice on the ball. There, it's it's obviously not too prominent. I mean, there is definitely some definition there, as you yeah. can see up close. Um, nothing too major to report in terms of play. Um, doesn't add any additional rebound. I mean, it's only going to help because the region is a little bit sturdier. So the leather itself is very soft. But these regions are a little bit more rigid. So, I mean, it's going to help in terms of striking the ball. You're not going to get as much impact as you um, put in your solid shots, top corner. But, yeah, overall, I was pretty pleased with them. Um, but as I said, I've got some minor concerns about those Kevlar 
cables, uh, which I'm going to be keeping an eye on over the uh, coming weeks as I test them out just to see how sturdy or how well they stay in place. If you'll notice on the side as well, it has this little window. Is that a little window with the Kevlar lace running through? Okay, yeah, yeah. It's always not that. And what, from what I can tell, I, from feel, obviously I haven't taken the boot apart and I don't know how it's constructed, but this, this Kevlar cable that goes in here, I can feel running down along here. Oh, it runs through the back of the heel? It, yeah, so it seems like it goes actually through that window. So I'm not okay, sure so whether... The, uh, initially, I thought that window was there just to say, hey, these boots have Kevlar cables in them. But from feel, and as I said, I can follow that cable down along. Like that cable is coming down right down here, and it goes through, mm -hmm. and then kind of it kind of comes down a little bit. Well, it goes into here, but it goes okay. down lower towards the heel. So, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, does it actually do that? I assume so, and I assume it's, it's true on the other side as well, which would mean that the cable runs around the heel and has a fully protected fit. Okay, also. that's... So if you pull those lasers, it's going to be that. So yeah, interesting, interesting release. I don't think I don't think we've really seen anything this um, technical in terms of actual fit before. No, I I don't think uh, I mean you know we've had obviously the stuff with the Brio cables, but nothing which has been this in depth to yeah just just the locking of your foot I suppose into the boot. It's it'll be interesting to see how it plays out for you over the next few weeks. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to wear these a little bit more to see how they test out. But thus far, I like them. I actually enjoy the colorway as well. Um, oh, I, really like, I really like the leather that's on them. It's very soft. Oh, nice. It's got that kind of like light shimmer effect. Got that tint to it, so it's nice. And as I understand, that's not a K leather, though, is it? I think that's just a... Uh... No, it's just a regular leather. Yeah. So... All right, so that was that. So these a review will follow at some point on them. Pretty cool release. Next up is the um, Elastico Superfly Turf Edition. I know we ran over this. I think it was was it last week or the week before. Um, hold on. I think it was two weeks ago. I think it was two weeks ago because yours are, you're under, they're underneath the Christmas tree right now, right? That's right. Yeah, they will be uh, reopened on Thursday. Yes. How excited are you? Well, I've got I've got the. Uh, I'll be, I'll be more excited Sunday when I get to bring them back out to play. <laughs> nice. Got the laser orange version came in. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to check these out. It's going to be nice that both of us can, can compare our notes as it is on and how they perform. It'll lead, it'll lead to an interesting review as well because, yeah, it's us being entirely different types of players. Well, that's very true. I mean, that's the benefit of, of, of me being fast and a good soccer player and you being slow. And, and that's, no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I didn't me, go there. No, 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 continue going there by all means. Yeah, no. I, it's, no, it's I'm only kidding, man. It's, it's, it's a valid comparison. Don't worry. The uh, kids will enjoy to do a review. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's a pretty, pretty popping colorway. I don't really think you get a sense of... The color, like on my screen right now, it's very different. It's a lot lighter on screen than it would be here. It's really, yeah, really it here. It's got like a bright, bright orange look to it. I was so. gonna say because I get more of a little, more of a closer to a yellowy sort of colorway. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's like it's like an orange, orange color. So yeah, it's just that it's just the screen that doesn't depict it as naturally. I don't think, but pretty good design. I wore them this weekend, Rich, and you know, as I said with the actual Superfly. They're not necessarily my type of boot. That mid cut collar, it, I just feel a little bit too trapped. A little bit too trapped in when I'm I'm trying to explode away. The sole play as well. Is, what's that? Were you wearing them elevens on like turf, or were you wearing them fives? Elevens on turf. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not. Yeah, it's not short sighted. So it's yeah. No. You. Yeah. I mean, traction wise I found them to be suitable, but again, it's just like I, I need my I need my blades or my studs. You know, I need something that I feel like I'm I'm really digging into the surface. Yeah, no, I know. So it's just don't get that feel. And and it's I mean, in terms of like shooting and stuff, I don't know. I just depend on that solid traction. And I mean traction wise they're fine. They're fine. When you're running, you're not slipping around the place. 
it's just I want to dig into the surface and really feel like what I'm digging into, to be honest. Well, it's it's yeah, it's that it's that sort of mental thing, right? It's that mental game. Yeah. So if you're not if if it's not there, if it's a little <laughs> different, you're gonna be yeah a little bit thrown off by it. It's like when we did uh, when you had the uh, the Asics with the with the ten with the ten millimeter heel, and I had the uh, the X Blade Legends with the same thing, and it was it just throws you off when because your brain isn't used to it. You have to redo everything. Yep. That's exactly what it is, and it's like, yeah, I mean, in a sense, you don't really want to retrain, so I'm sure over time, if I stuck with something like this, I'd become more familiar with it, but that's not my, not something I really want to do, so. Hey, up on the screen right now, just pull up an image, um, and this is the next thing we're going to talk about, it's the Elastico Superfly Indoor Quarter IC version with the shimmer effect. Before we get to these right now, appreciate anybody that's watching, leave us a comment down below on YouTube, so we can check them out. I'm, I'm going to be checking out the comments as we go along. Um, and always appreciate any thumbs up you can offer as we continue to talk. We're going to go through this, then the Hypervenom, and then we'll get into the packs. Rich, did you see this one released today? I I did. I saw it drop in the middle of the afternoon, I think. I was at work, and I saw it fully come out as a full release here. And it it is what I was sort of calling for when the... CR7 pack came out in the uh, in the vapor. I said uh, I, do, I do recall that. Yeah. My big thing was I said make this and don't put that giant CR7 logo on the instep of the heel. And here it is. It's it's there uh, in an indoor version, which makes it even Nike, nicer for me. He listened to you. Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean. Exactly. Now, if they could put this across all of the boots, it'd be even better. <laughs> which could potentially happen. Yep. No. Absolutely. I mean, right now we know it's it's limited just to the uh, just to the futsal court per se, as opposed to uh, the other Elastico Superflies, which when in stock at least because they've been really reasonably popular. I know the colorway I have in the turf has been really popular in the court version to the point you can't get it right now. Uh, yeah. Your version is still available. Uh, the orange color. I think it might just be because sort of picture wise. That orange part, but this is this is fantastic. Uh, I mean, as much as I wanted to try out the turf version of the Elastico Superfly, I almost wish this would have come out when I was making that purchase, because uh, I I just I, I love the look of it. <laughs> I do. I like the look as well, and I think the Nike have done a good job with that shimmer effect across all their releases. Um, probably one of the better designs and customized designs since they are like a CR7 signature look um, that, that have been released to market, but I like it. You get that shimmer effect. You can see by the close-up detailing that. Mm -hmm. There really is some effect other than just the standard black um, and it's, color. It's, so. And it's not, it's not too overstated. It, you just, it, it's just no, it's the right not. amount. It really is. Like, it really is. It gives a little bit extra bling without being too out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Is, so, if if so you that, like the that was, yeah. no, I was gonna say if you like the black boots, but you, you can still wear them. And if if you like something with a little bit more shine to it, then then you're set either way. It, it works both ways. Yep. All right. So next up, we have <clears throat> these hyper venoms that we talked about. A few weeks ago, we brought them up in one of our episodes. We had a pretty good image of them. These images are much better. They come from Kato Poco on Instagram. I have the Instagram link on these images, so if you want to go check out his account. He comes out with a lot of um, newer releases. He, he shows prior to them being released. So uh, He's a good one to check out and follow if you get a chance to. But he gives us a good look at this release, which I think is set for... This summer, so we're still a few months out, um, but it's an interesting one uh, with images leaking all across the internet right now. What do you think of these, Rich? Uh, you know what? Uh, wasn't a huge fan when I first saw it, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm intrigued seeing this angle uh, with all with all the stitching. Yeah. And, uh, that that's really interesting. 
Uh, I'm assuming that means it's going to be heavily on uh, heavily on the Brio uh, the Brio wire cables. Kind of looks like it, yeah, from the from from the side of the boot. And if I bring up, give me one second, I'll pull up another image for us to check out. Speaking of stitching, you might enjoy this one. As soon as I get it up, right here. You checking that one out? Yep, yep. No, it's there. It's yeah, no, it's <clears throat> that's. So you can see, it, it almost looks like there's folds in the upper. I was just saying, it even, it's not even stitching. Yeah, it's more like yeah, it's yeah, just it's folds. Like full wrap. Folds or creases. Yeah. It kind of does. does. You can see the wire. You can see, yeah, you can see the wire support system in where the lace, the yeah. eyelets are for the laces. I mean, that's not even, yeah. I don't even know what, yeah. I, I don't even know what you can yeah. use to make that on the upper. I don't know either, but it looks like some so, sort of like a, I want to say like a suede upper style. Mm -hmm. like the textile -y, it kind of looks like a textile, um, which is interesting in itself. That type of up, or material that they're going to use. And then, yeah, those folds are very unique. You can see in this middle section, it looks like there's several, like, crisscross. Mm -hmm. Pretty wild design. And I've heard it's... rumors that this possibly will be renamed The Finish. The Finish? Yeah. So, I mean, all of this is pretty much unconfirmed. It's just kind of rumors that are circulating. But, yeah, that is the rumor right now. So, so to quote an old hockey joke here, this is this is basically uh, this is going to be like the official boot of like the Swedish national team, so it can be all Swedish, no finish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's why we uh, pay you the big bucks, Rich. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> moving along. Let's get into packs. And again, uh, before I do, let me check out YouTube. Rich, talk about something there while I check out YouTube. Um, well, what how do we got? How did Sheffield United do this weekend? How are they doing uh, in the FA Cup? How are we doing in the FA oh, Cup? Sorry, sorry, not the FA Cup, the uh, Carling Cup. Are you guys in the summer uh, the, of the Carling Cup? Uh, the old Worthington's Cup, or the old Milk Cup, or the old yeah. League Cup. Yes, we are in the semifinals. Uh, oh, the Coca-Cola Cup, yeah. Uh, we uh, the other day, not the other day, last week or so, we beat Southampton in the quarterfinals. Uh, Southampton manager Ronald Coleman had a little bit of a fit after the match. Said some not very nice things about Nigel Clough and uh, his coaching staff at Sheffield United. But yeah. other than that, yeah, no, we are once again for the second season running into a big cup semifinal. We've knocked off our fourth our fourth Premiership club of the calendar year. That's crazy, and man. A, a two-legged semifinal affair with Spurs in the new year. Beautiful. you got to be pretty excited for that. Uh, it's, here's, hoping that uh, here's hoping that Nigel does what his dad did, which is take a team to Europe, an unfashionable club, and then win out in Europe. Is that Sheffield uh, United jersey you've got on right now? This is an old chef, chef. This is an old Sheffield United jersey. Yeah, back from the days of Tony Curry in the 1970s. Beautiful, man. Where'd you pick up that one? Uh, if you're familiar, I've done some stuff. I think I did some stuff last Christmas about a website called Tots, the old-fashioned football yeah, shirts. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Yeah, no, I picked it up from them. Oh, nice. Yeah, they do some great stuff. Uh, good English company out of Gateshead. Uh, everything is all cotton. It's all old style. It's really good stuff. Nice. Not just limited to the English clubs either, Spanish clubs. There's even old NASL jerseys, so. Yeah. Like it's not for everybody. And... Yeah, there's some Mass Tech jerseys. There's the uh, the, Was the old Washington Diplomats from when uh, Johan Cruyff played there. Yeah. Well, I wish we talked about them a few weeks ago so people could have picked up some jerseys but for Christmas. Well, that's anyway. a day late and a dollar short, as they say, right? Yeah. Probably is a day late right now. <clears throat> Let's get into packs and collections. It has been an absolutely crazy year of packs. We're going to talk about a lot of them right here on our screen. And something I've done, let me explain a little bit. I've kind of split them up. So we don't, 
I'm not. We're not necessarily talking about favorites right here. We're not giving any preference to any packs, but we're gonna split them up into different categories, and we can define them. We can we can choose which ones we like best. If you want to talk about a specific one, Rich, it's open to you. You guys are watching right now. If you want to talk about any of the packs, or let us know which ones you prefer. Leave it down in the comment section down below. I'll be checking it out. The only comment we had so far was from Ethan Williams, who wanted to know if we knew anything about the New Balance boots. Um, and the answer will be yes, Ethan, we do. Moving on. Um, if you have any comments about these packs, you want to leave them below. Leave it in the comments, and I'll, I'll check it out. This one here, this slide right here, should uh, show you the most colorful ones, colorful collections we've seen, or packs we've seen from this year. The reason I say packs or collections is because Adidas like to call them packs and Nike like to call them collections. Puma like to call them whatever Puma comes up with. So I think Puma just gives them a name, don't they? Like it'll be yeah, like a Puma. one word thing. Or they like to say collaboration a lot. That's kinda like their word. Oh well well it's collaboration when they when they pull in some designers, they do a, a collaboration with pretty much it. Pretty much every release they have is a collaboration. Well, yeah, well, Did, yeah. Didn't they call the Bob Kelly one with, uh, 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 collaboration? Uh, I don't remember that one. The only one I know for sure which used a collaboration was the one that they did on on the King with uh, was it Alexander McQueen, the fashion designer? Yeah. Well, yeah, those... bottom, bottom left on this image is their their streetwear collaboration with um, Alif Bap. Kaleth and Keith. Do you remember okay, yeah. this series of releases when they were released? They only said like there was a hundred pairs, something. I, I forget the numbers. It was something like a hundred pairs of each pair. They're available, I, and yet you can still find a lot of them out there, including the Elif ones, which is the one on the left with the cigarette lighters. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm I'm number one. We actually detailed these ones on the website. Um, number one, I wasn't a fan of the design because they're cigarette lighters on a, a boot. It's just like a bunch of cigarette layers. And number two, those guys from, I don't know whether it's A-Life, Alife, Alif, whatever it is, they're pretty funky dudes. They're not people I'd like to hang out with. Let me put it that way. I don't uh, know if you've researched them, Rich, but... I haven't, haven't looked them up, but I'll take yeah. your word on it. I mean, it's... It's, an, it's, it's like, it was, like dumb life. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's not... Yeah, as, as, a, as a kid, as a kid from a kid from a steel town in northern England, yeah, we're not really, uh, yeah, I wouldn't know a whole lot about that. No. But, uh, but at the same time, I mean, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing. I mean, Puma, I can see what Puma were doing with the uh, with the street with the street life collaboration because I mean, in in the soccer game, Puma and actually in a lot of the fashion game, Puma are like the company of like quasi hipsters, if you want to call it that. Is because it's for the guys who don't want something which is overly popular. So you go with Puma, yeah. which in turn makes it overly popular. So it's an interesting dynamic. It's an interesting market niche. So they were trying to expand out, bring in a little bit of something different. Uh, yeah, what they did was they give the, they give these brands like creative freedom. So it was like prior to the World Cup, and they said, "Hey, what does soccer mean to you? Put it on a boot," which really confuses me because why would Elif put Cigarette layers. Well, in, in fairness, uh, these guys could be like old school soccer historians who are harkening back to that uh, that bygone era of uh, coming off the pitch at halftime, having a pint, and uh, smoking a cigarette before you go back on. So you know, like guys from the seventies, like the That's rock true. and roll, St Stanley Bowles, Rodney Marsh, like those kind of guys. That's yeah, true. They could be going that way. All right. <laughs> but the other thing is, and this is why I know of it all. This is my theory on why these packs are still available. Is yeah. look at the boot that they've used to do the pack. Yes, yeah, the older they model. Used, they used the Evo Power One. The sorry, not the, the Evo Power One. The Evo Speed One, like yeah. the original Evo Speed boot. That's right, and and these were these were released. Well, actually, I think they were supposed to be released much earlier in the year than they were. Uh, and when they were they were released, the Evo Speed Two was about to be released. So, mm -hmm. well, you, well, you know, fashion okay. fashion designers don't work on a time frame. Yeah, that's true. 
That is true. The other ones of note, obviously, is top left. We got the Copa Mundials, and Adidas went wildly colorful for the World Cup on those boots, as well as pretty much every other boot they released this past year. But it was sort of an unexpected series that we had released. Um, what did you think of those when they were released, Rich? Unexpected. I'll, I'll say. I'll, I'll say. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've mellowed on them over time. Yeah. Because I actually don't mind the colorways, but no, it's it's still something which you can't. It it. It's not Copa Mundial. That's the thing. The Copa Mundial is it's either black or it's it's well actually up until this year, it's like the last twelve months it was it was black with white stripes and you know, then they brought up the white with black stripes and everybody went, Well, okay, that's fine because of, you know, that whole I, that whole heritage sort of boot thing with white becoming acceptable again in the nineteen seventies to yeah. go into like full on soccer historian mode here. Uh, that was Alan Ball with a pair of Hummels, but another matter. Interesting story about that is Hummel couldn't get him the boots printed up in the white with the black, so they actually took a pair of Copa Mundials, painted them white, and painted the Hummel logo onto them in black. But so the Copa Mundial, I suppose you could say, is the original colorful heritage boot without intentionally being that. Uh, so, but at the same time, no. Uh, the colors, like I say, I've mellowed on them. They're they're all right. I've seen a few of them in person, and I'm borderline okay with it. But I still, yeah, I still. If it would have been like, let's say, the the Kaiser Five, it would have been yeah. a little bit more easy to handle. Yeah, I get you. It's definitely out there. Something we definitely didn't expect. Um, they were very popular. I know they were very popular, and most of them sold out pretty quickly. So. That's got to say something about it. I guess as the first time Adidas has taken a couple of money out of color, it would be pretty unique and special that people would want their pairs. Top right, we've got the Carnival uh, pack, which had that flicker effect in it. Uh, middle left is was an interesting one, and we kind of briefly hit on this beforehand. This was Nike's summer pack, but it was released in March. Um... Which was pretty early to be calling it a summer series. And then we had several colorways released in between then and the World Cup. So it was kind of a slightly confusing one. Bottom right is the Shine Through collection, which was released in the past few weeks. And I'll be honest, I think that's my favorite from this um, from this slide, favorite series of boots. Uh, of the series, definitely. It's... Yeah. Uh, the it's it's the one that makes sort of the most sense. I mean, it's yeah, no, it, it just has that pop to it. I mean, the Carnival collection uh, that had a cup of coffee, and then everybody forgot everybody forgot it existed yeah, until just was, now. Yeah, that, was, that was a quick one. That just like came and went, right? Yeah. No, exactly. Nike the, the Nike Summer Pack was very underwhelming. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, the the shine through is definitely. Definitely the top dog of the colors that you have there. Also, by the way, before you click off that, I noticed that you wrote colors without a U in the file name up there. Oh, yeah. Well, that would be the estranged American wave right now. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I know you were probably taught differently than that. Yeah, we move away from the, the French pronunciation and, and uh, spelling. Well, no. Not the French. It's, it's the legitimate English pronunciation and spelling. But still, <laughs> but still, okay. <laughs> I got you. I got you, Rich. I got you. Um, a few comments in. We got Ollie, the coolest guy. This is the finish. This is going back to the Hyper Venom, um, and the tier above will have the collar, the mid cut collar, and that'll be the new Phantom. So there's some information right there. Willing Football, our friends in Brazil. Um, I like the last pack by Adidas, which would be the leather boots, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, but they are too expensive and limited. So, Next one we're going to get into, I'm going to pull it up right here, is... Oh, wouldn't you know it? We're going to talk, we're going to talk black. We're going... Okay. Are we go, we're going back in black? We're going black packs. So top left, we've got the Pure Letter Collection that was just released, that classic 
KLR series of boots. On the right, we've got the Nike Stealth Pack, and just below that, we have the US Pitch Black. And the Pitch Black and the Nike Stealth Pack were both released in July, and this was kind of a trend this week with, or sorry, this year with both brands, is that they'd release a similar, very, very similar series of boots in a very close period of time. And it was it was true with the black collections from from both um, companies, which was interesting in itself. You'll note that the Nitro Charge on the Adidas pack has that gold effect in it, so it wasn't necessarily a full-on blackout. Well, that um, was well. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't that from the uh, that Nitro Charge? Isn't that from the Tribal pack? It's from it's from it was mixed in with another pack. It was in two packs, and let me tell you, yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now because I'll pu I'll pull up the pack. It was in the um, the yeah was the yeah it was the travel pack. It was the travel pack. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. The post the post World Cup travel pack, which just took yeah. the World Cup design and made it into colors. Yeah, which we're going to be obviously looking at in a minute too. Yeah. Um, Oh, sorry. I think I just pulled it off your screen. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I went, I went dark. <clears throat> okay, I'm just coming back. Here it is, back. But yeah, so that was part of two collections, and it was kind of unusual that they released it as part of their, um, as part of their um, pitch black bag. Sorry. But. But no, it's all, all three, all three packs, all very classy. Yeah, I mean, I, other than other than other than the tribal, the tribal slash pitch black nitro charge, but I mean that also came that boot also came around the time that they were flipping the the nitro charge silo is like from the original nitro charge to the new nitro charge at the same time. That's right. Yeah. So so it makes sense, I suppose, to yeah repurpose a little bit. Well, uh, you're probably, probably just trying to get rid of it. Yeah. Interesting uh, with what you noted when we said it was kind of like one of those sort of it was one of those weird tit for tat years between Nike and Adidas. Anything you can do, we can also do. Uh, yeah. So does this? Uh, unfortunately, what it doesn't mean is that uh, Adi that Nike have decided to uh, take the Adidas thing and bring us a a K leather package of uh, all of their boots, like Adidas did with the pure leather pack here. A K leather superfly. Well, it'd be a K leather mercurial vapor. <laughs> yeah, with, with, no, a, I, with, I mean, a, with I agree. A dynamic, with a dynamic fit collar. <laughs> with a dynamic fit collar, made of leather. <laughs> I think. I think the toughest, probably the toughest one of the bunch, would be a K leather Nike Magista Obra. <laughs> that would be pretty tough. Try and pull that one off, Nike. Give that one to your designers and say, pull it off. Um, yeah, and but going along that lines, I can see where you're going in this one with your favorite, and it has to be the the um, the uh, pure leather pack in the top left. It's, it's got to be the best. Classy. I mean, Nike did a fantastic job, and I appreciate what they've they, they've done. I actually enjoy the uh, Predator Instinct in that black, light gray shade color uh, as well. So I mean, there's a lot of really classy designs here, and it's nice to see both brands. Going back to um, historic colors, colors of the past, these limited edition black releases that we see nowadays. Well, there are, that's the thing, is there are, what is there, seven, seven there's ten, of eleven boots there, there's ten really nice looking boots, and one which is, just seems uh, odd. See, it's just a little bit out of place. Alright, so this was the... The black collections or packs next up. And again, if you guys have any comments as you're watching along, I'm following your uh, comments on YouTube, so leave us some comments. Next up, let me see what we got right here. We have got... It's taking a second, Rich. Oh, no problem. Uh, this, will, uh, this will give me a quick chance to... Uh, Fulfill my what? What beverage am I drinking this week? Because we're being very judgmental this week, I felt like it was a good idea to hit up a, a local brewery, Great Lakes Brewery in Toronto, Ontario, about an hour away from where I am, and I picked up a uh, few cans of their 
pompous ass pale ale. Pompous ass pale ale sounds delicious. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, if I'm going to be judgmental, I may as well be a pompous ass when I'm doing it. So. Yeah. How 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 herby is that that pale ale? Uh, it's 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 designed to be like an English pale ale, but with like a North American twist. So there's a little bit of hoppiness to it. Right. Uh, it's it's interesting. Uh, I like it. It's like nothing I've ever drank before, though, because it's not like an English pale ale. It's not like an IPA. Okay. But it but it will bring out the judgment calls in me tonight. So here we go. Hey, look at that. Good. There's a nitro charge boot I've seen before. There you go. It's the next one up. <laughs> Here we got the. I like to call this this series the A and another. So it's just oh, some oh, of the uh, other packs. Yes, uh, and the lineup will feature at number fourteen. A and other. <laughs> A and other. There you go. <laughs> uh, top left is the tribal pack. Was released in July. Top right is the Nike ID Gold Pack. So these are boots that you can create on the Nike ID um, system. And that was brought to us in July with the gold. Bottom left was the Earth Pack, um, which I think out of that collection, straight off the back, that F50 was a winner because there are still players wearing that F50 right now. No, so, I, absolutely. I mean, that F50 was that F50 was the boot, almost the boot of the World Cup. Yeah, that, that boot got a lot of publicity. Van Persie, Robin, I mean, yeah. it, it just from that game, just from that Holland, that Netherlands, uh, Spain game. Yeah. And it had a few people going, w what, so what boot is that? And I had to go looking back through it, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, no, it's, it's the Earth Pack. And I mean, it's sort of of the packs that Adidas did for the first half of the year, it's probably it was probably the most consistent and the best received. Yeah. Just across the board. I mean, yeah, the the, the nitro charge looks nice with that uh, that sort of foresty green with the shock of orange, the predator with the white with the orange. With I yeah. think there's I'm not 100 percent sure if there was any green if there was any sort of that similar. Green color to it. I'm not. Can't, no, no, can't say it. not necessarily. No, it was. Just yeah, size. but it was just. Yeah, no, it was just. The whole pack was well done. I mean, because it was at the time when Adidas was releasing a pack every three days. Yeah, that that was pretty much it. We've seen so many packs released from Adidas this year. It's pretty crazy. And that's probably why they doubled up. They kind of got confused and thought the Nitro Charge wasn't released prior to. Uh, this tribal collection, the F50 in the tribal collection also is another boot. That pink and um, solar blue is another boot that got a lot of publicity as well. It was pretty highly seen through the past year, and there's a lot of players still wearing them as well. So, well, bottom that, right is yeah. Sorry, that the, the 11 right. Pro. Yeah, in that, that blue in that 11 Pro. Blue, yeah, that's a good looking boot too. That is actually yeah. a really good looking boot too. Bottom right, we have the hunt pack. So if you want to hunt at night, I'm confused. Why is it called a hunt pack again? So that if you want to be hunted and you're in the dark, your feet are going to glow and people are going to be able to find you. Well, that, that's the thing I don't get about this pack. That's I don't get about the name. I don't get um, it either. Because, because if you're hunting, you want to be stealthy and unseen. So you wouldn't want to be wearing something which just gives you away because it's glowing. Yeah, what should we call it the highlight pack? The highlighter pack? Uh, uh, the weird iridescent glow pack. Um, well, when they were released, I did refer to them as the glow in the glow in the dark pack. Yeah, the, we, yeah, we did call them the glow in the dark package. So yeah, the uh, the Adidas glow in the the Adidas. Are you afraid of the dark package? Yeah. So let's just go with that. The glow in the dark pack. If you had to choose one boot on this page um, for people watching right now, which boot would you choose? Leave it in the comments down below. Rich, which would you choose? And then I'll find, uh, out, what, I'll find out what people are saying after this. Okay. Um, for a boot, I'd probably go the Nitro Charge from the Earth Pack, but as a design sort of look, I would go with the uh, F50 from the Earth Pack. 
Yeah, 15 in the Europe League, yeah. You know, I'm going gold in this one. I'm, I'm, I've always been a, a fan of gold, and I like those superflies in the gold. Now, I'm not a fan, performance-wise, of the superfly. I am a fan. I like the superfly. I'm just, it's, it's not the right boot for me. Um, yeah. But I do like that gold on that design. So oh. I like it a lot, a lot more than the, than the Obra as well. So yeah, well, f- five or six, five or six years down the line, when you've lost that half step of electric pace that you have, you know, uh, that might be the boot for you. They might suit me then. So uh, you know, get a pair, order in a I, pair, make a pair, have them send out, and then just mothball them for about five or I, six years. Would I really get away with in five or six years wearing a gold boot? Isn't that when I was supposed to go black? Well, the black be, boots. Well, you won't be that old. <clears throat> no, that's true. I'll still be young enough. <laughs> you just have that. You just won't have that electric pace. <laughs> just be a different player. Yeah, All right, let's move it along. Creative. All right, let's see let's what we got on. otherwise. Yeah, I'm still waiting for some comments down below. So as soon as we get some more uh, comments, I'll uh, I'll bring them up and I'll share. So next up, we're going to talk specifically. About the um, Nike Fast Forward collection. Ah, so this is our this Forward. is our only collection, limited to one silo. This is this is, but it's kind of worth it because there's a lot of history to this series. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, I I was shocked. I remember when this came out and I saw that it had yeah, you know, you had. You went back to nine, ninety-eight. I mean, mind you, that being said, Nike could have said that they had a, like a blue and purple colorway in nineteen ninety-eight, and I would have believed them. Nineteen ninety-eight is that long ago for me to go back in my memory. Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, two thousand two. I remember. This was another opportunity, though, for Nike to sell boots. So they cre- they took the the, the Vapor Nine. They added some really iconic colorways, and obviously they sold really well. And mm-hmm. it's cool that they call it like the the kind of like a throwback collection, like the fast forward, whatever you want to call it. But it wasn't necessarily the real deal, and what a lot of people were calling for. So I understand, and it's really cool that they brought back the designs, and they kind of tricked us a little bit in that by by announcing like they were going to make a remake of a certain style of boot from the past. I'm still craving the 2002 version, the 1998 version. You know, I still want the actual boot itself. Well, rather than that than that remake. Well, Brian, was that actually a colorway that Nike used in 1998? Cuz Yeah, it was. I'm, okay, cuz I I know well, the problem for me is is that the '98 World Cup was the uh, that was the World Cup of Zidane, yeah, and that was the World Cup of black and red and uh, the Accelerator. So yeah. I don't, I honestly could not remember what colorway night he had. The other three I can vouch for. I mean, because the Mercurial va- the, the the O2 the O2 Vapor there with that chromed out look. I remember because that was. That was the uh, World Cup of the greatest commercial ever done, which was the Nike Cage commercial, which had yeah. that chromed out soccer ball as well. It was just fantastically was awesome. done. Yeah. Awesome commercial, awesome colored boot. Uh, I've seen the 06 colorway in uh, in person. It looks quite nice. I wish yeah. that I, for my wallet's sake, it's probably lucky I didn't see the 02 version because I would have bought it. Despite yeah. having worn vapors and a boot I just can't wear just because of the blades and my old man my old man shouting at pictures about blades being bad thing comes out. But uh, <laughs> Fergie? Sorry. Yeah, I, I get all Fergie. I'm gonna I'm gonna kick a boot at somebody and hit them in the eye type deal. Well above the eye, sorry, yeah. not in the eye. And then yeah, no, the two thousand ten version was I mean, the O two and the two thousand ten version are bought definitely my favorites of the uh, collection. Yeah, if you're an yeah, American, if you're an American, the 2010 colorway is your favorite because yeah. that was the colorway that Landon Donovan was wearing when he scored the goal against Algeria to send America through to the second round as a group winner. That's right, that's right. And as you can see on the right, I prefer that boot. 
in 2010, it was all about visual acuity, where it was all vis visual cues um, as players played. I, the one thing I like about this was when the boot were released, Nike gave us these four images. Mm -hmm. um, and I love, and it actually says it inside the boot on the insole as well. It has a, the, the little bit of writing inside. And I like this a lot because it gives you a little bit more of a feel for each boot. Um, and some interesting notes, for example, with that um, 2010 version, the talon studs ins were inspired by a cheetah's retractable claws. How about that one? Um, the 98 on the right-hand side, it says, did you know that the mercurial was almost called the Ultravox? Did you know that? It was almost called, sorry, the... The Ultravox. Like V-O-X? Yeah, Ultravox. Like, Ultravox, that was a... That was like a low-grade stereo system back in the day, I think. <laughs> well, they were going to name That's, it after it's, low grade. It's a good. It's a good thing they didn't call it that. Yeah. You'd, you'd never sell those. You, it would be tough, right? Yeah. Uh, bottom right, the O2 version, inspired by the McLaren F1 Formula 1 car. Uh, bottom left, heel bucket was inspired by race car seats, which, yeah, interesting in itself. Makes but, sense, uh, makes sense. It gives some good write-ups on each one. It gives you some details on what the original was all about. Obviously, not these particular boots, but what the original was all about. And I thought that was interesting, and it was a reason that I kind of wanted to bring up this image. Um, if you guys watch right now, you can kind of read through and check it all out. If anybody needs an actual copy of it, I have this this image right here. If you want to put it as your screensaver or something, just contact me and let me know, and I can send you the file. Um, okay, so we'll move along. So that was cool. We got two more to go, Rich. Two more, um, and just to know, next week on tap for next week, and I just wrote this down. We're gonna we're gonna discuss the limited edition releases from 2014. All the boots that were limited edition, and there were a lot of them, are boots that were custom to to a specific player. And we're also gonna bring you an elite eight bracket of our breakdown of the top boots of the year. So we're gonna pick eight, and we might ask for some input from um, you guys on Twitter and Facebook. So we might ask for some input on boots that you would put as your top eight. Actually, you can leave it in the comments down below if you have maybe like four or five boots that you want to suggest that we include next week. If, um, if, we'll, if we'll, can, we'll, can I make a can I make a rule for comments if we're, if we're going to include four or five? If everybody wants to drop in and give us four or five boots that they think should be in the running for us to debate for a boot of the year for the Elite Eight, uh, bring out a couple of different brands. Yeah, don't bring don't so, be like yeah, all one Nike or all. Yeah, don't give me all Nike. Don't give me all Adidas or all Puma. I mean, there are like the 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 little the littler guys. They make some fantastic stuff. So, if you can throw me throw me a bone, if you want to go two Nike, two Adidas, then throw me like a Diadora or a Mizuno something. <laughs> yeah, just add something else in there. I'm down with that. That sounds good to me. So if you guys want to leave us some suggestions, and we'll have an Elite Eight bracket. I'm going to set the my laptop up a little, little bit of a different angle, so we'll have a whiteboard, and we'll have our little bracket going to make sure that we do it appropriately. Maybe we should even have a drawing where we just draw out of a pot the top eight. Oh, oh. Now should we do? Now should we do like a quick? We we can do that as almost a teaser. Uh, a couple of days before, even you could do the draw, the official draw. The official drawing. We could do the official drawing. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. All right, yeah, sold. All right, kids, sold. Saturday or Sunday, there will be the official draw for... Just give us your, give us your suggestions. <laughs> I think we have some coming. Before we go into the last two slides, let's just... Uh, let's see. Let's just see what some people have to say here. Um, Ali suggested the Earth Pack of the Nitro Charge. It was his choice. We have more choice. request for information um, from that slide a few slides back. Oh, no, that's a good choice. I mean, that's yeah, right. a that's boot. It. That's what I would have worn. But, yeah, yeah. design-wise, it would have been the F50. Yeah. And we have lots more comments about the New Balance boots. People are interested in these New Balance boots. <laughs> what can we tell you? They're going to be released in January. They've got some sort of a... Um, defined upper that's going to be honeycomb slash hex textured and people, score, and people score absolute screamers when they wear them 
<laughs> yeah, apparently they're going to be the greatest striking boot of all time. Not a guarantee. <laughs> no, no. No disclaimer with this one. Uh, last two we got up, and I'm going to bring up a slide right now, and then I'm going to take down the slide in a second so we can see these boots in person because I like the, the box of these came in. But it's from, again, pre-World Cup. These were the boots worn by Puma players in the World Cup, and they were probably the most, probably one of the more significant boots in terms of visibility um, and were seen in, in, um, during the tournament. It's the uh, Puma Tricks collection with that pink and blue. You remember these one, Rich? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Right is, right is pink, left is blue. Uh, if there's one thing Puma does at World Cups, it's it's they do things differently. It's almost like they do like a little bit more guerrilla marketing style. Yeah. I remember in uh, was it 2010 in South Africa. Uh, outside of South Africa, they were the official kit provider of every African every, country in the World Cup. Everybody. Pre World Cup, they had that like they had that, you, they. The African, the African Unity Pack that they yeah, did. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. If, if you're an African nation and you made the World Cup in 2010, Puma was sponsoring you. <laughs> that was pretty much it. Well, I've got, I've got the box here. I'm going to load it on myself for a little bit. I've got the box right here. So this was the collection. It came in this pretty awesome box. We did an unboxing of this. You can kind of go back through the archives and, and check it out. But the way the box worked is it kind of like slipped apart. Oh, lost my earpiece, so I can't hear you right now, Rich. That's no worse. You don't listen much yeah, anyways. Yeah. When I talk. <laughs> There's the boots. And as you can tell, as you can tell, they haven't been worn. So these are freshly boxed and ready they to be worn. Either one. You haven't worn them. That's no, it's almost criminal. Them. Well, they are too beautiful to wear. I would absolutely love to wear those Evo Powers. You know me. I'm a huge fan of the Evo Power. I think they're fantastic. Uh, I, I actually I have a friend who went out and bought the Evo Powers. He paid, yeah, full whack for them. Yeah. In that colorway. And, yeah, he he loves them. I mean, I mean, you've, yeah, you've, you've got the pair of Evo Powers that you've, you've broken in the love already, so it doesn't... Yeah. And this is a cool little pack, man. This is like something that you... It's so interesting. It's like there's magnets on it, so you can actually open it off four ways. Oh, jeez. So it's, it's kind of like, oh, where do I go with it now? <laughs> but it all comes back together in this cool little... Oh, that's... Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I Enjoyed that one. I thought I'd bring it up. Another, another box real quick to bring up. I think I put them back together wrong. Um, yeah, no, you gotta make you got to make the big cat come together. You can't, you can't leave it. You can't leave it apart. It will go crazy. Yeah. I've got the uh, Cup Mundial in a Samba in the lime colorway right here. Okay, yeah. I had, to, I had to break them out as well. So I've actually worn these, but not a cool. Fair I thought I'd bring them up since we talked about them the last uh, little bit ago. So the last thing that we have to talk about today is the battle pack, and I'll pull up the image in a second, but I've got two of the pair of boots here that I pulled out really quick, which was... The messy version, since you, since it was kind of unique to the pack, in that it had that blue shade or stripe that went through the middle of the boot. And then I pulled out, I just pulled out the nitro charge pair. Okay, so yeah. Just, just so we'd have something to kind of look at. But these two boots came in, and I'm going to pull up an image right now. They came in this package that Adidas sent over pre-World Cup. And here is kind of an image of the box from above, which was an awesome box. It got a ton of views um, on our site. We did a, I did an unboxing on the website. And it got a lot of hits. People really enjoyed checking them out. And it shows the four silos with that messy version of the F50 in the middle. So technically kind of like five different versions or different boots, but um, pretty interesting collection. I know a lot of people, when they were released, weren't big fans of this. Uh, and a lot of people, well, sorry, I'm not going to speak for a lot of people. I'll speak for myself. Uh, still aren't really big fans of it. Um, I mean, 
I look at the package, and yeah, okay, Messi gets his own boot because, well, he's, he's Messi, so he do that. But just marketing-wise, how much is that designed that Adidas wants Argentina to win the World Cup? Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're going to get a ton of publicity if Messi's in the final wearing those boots, for sure. And, I mean, he was in the final wearing them. Yeah. <laughs> Winning but, the World uh, Cup, sorry. I mean, yeah, but if he wins the World Cup wearing them, I mean that package is just designed <laughs> for yeah, pretty much for Messi. Yeah, I mean yeah. So you have yeah, Philip Lahm and Ozil in the eleven pro and the the Predator Instinct on the ends. But yeah, it's it's all set up for. I said, sort of the goal that uh, Messi hoists the World Cup in those yeah. boots. Um. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm thinking that picture on was the other was the top end because you got the case, Brian. That picture where you see the bear, the barracuda, of the ball. Was yeah. that Messi who was holding that? Let me pull up an image for you, Rich, and I'll show you. Because I have plenty of them here. Uh, let's see. Gotta go digging in some folders now. Oh, okay. Um, battle back. All right, so this might be a better image for you. Uh, uh. And I'm going to pull it up right now. Oh, wrong picture. Oh. I should have given you this one. Sorry. So here's the presentation case. So, yeah, yeah, it was Lionel Messi holding the World Cup ball. Yeah. My favorite thing about this All In or Nothing campaign was that one picture of Suarez. <laughs> where he looks like an animal and he's like, he's got his mouth open like about to chomp on something. <laughs> it was too oh. perfect. Oh, that was, that was brilliant. That was, yeah. Who would have even thought that would be a good idea? Let's well, put a picture I, of Suarez well, like, jumping. I, I can understand where it was coming from, oddly enough, was the idea is to, to present Luis Suarez as like the pantomime villain. He bit a guy in, in Holland. He bit Branislav uh, Ivanovic in the premiership. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's he's hungry to win for his country. And then it actually just turned out that he was just legitimately hungry and somebody should have given him a sandwich. <laughs> Maybe that's his problem. He doesn't get enough snacks before games. <laughs> I, I, mean, bet, yeah. I, bet they, I bet they figured out Barcelona, though. Oh, yeah. He, I'm sure he is well fed at Barcelona. Yeah, I would imagine so. Um, for you guys watching right now, your favorite pack of the year is... Let us know in the comment section below. Um, out of all the packs, I, I know we haven't actually covered all of the packs as well, so there was a bunch that we missed out on. If you have a certain pack that you like best, definitely let us know down in the comment section below. We want to hear what you, uh, you've got going on. Rich, I, I think that's it for our first 2014 recap video. Yep, no, abs absolutely. We've uh, gone for a little bit longer than I thought we were going to. Yeah, but, we've, uh, we've that already... is that. That's the breaks when you bring out a whole slew of things. And we've already obviously covered a lot. We covered a lot of topics. Um, next week, as I said, we're going to have the limited edition 2014 boots, and we'll go over our best of the best Elite Eight, and we'll break it down to a number one winner. We might have to get a third person in just to break up any split decisions we have. By the way. Yeah. No, I yeah, I was thinking about that. We'll probably have to do something that way. Yeah, because somebody, yeah. be, because yeah. I have a vague feeling I know how this is going to work out. Well, provided that the eight boots are sort of what I think they're, what I think they might be, I have a vague feeling how I feel this is going to play out. Yeah, it's a pity the uh, A6DS Lite x Fly wasn't released in 2014. Yeah, no, I mean, well, if that was, then, then there might be a little bit of a... Oh, hash, hashtag, hashtag shocker potential, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, there wouldn't be too I, many I people out there happy about that. Let's be honest. Yeah, 
I have a vague yeah. feeling how I think this might play out. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll go over it next week. Uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in today. And as I said, let us know about your uh, which which pack was your favorite from 2014 in the comments down below. And we look forward to having you guys on board next week as we go over the best of the best in 2014. Absolutely. It'll be a fun time. Uh, joyeux, uh, joyeux Noël. Joyeux <laughs> That's my Noël. French. Yes. Joyeux yes. Noël. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. You too. And everybody else out there. Enjoy the rest of that beer. I will do my best. Thanks, guys. Take care. <laughs> Cheers, Rich. Bye.